Like most of us, you've probably seen the impressive demos of AI tools. I just built a fully functional Shopify app in 20 minutes without any code. You were one of the first people who created this product only using AI tools. Cognition Labs released a video a while ago showing their AI software engineer Devin making API requests, displaying the data, and even deploying the app autonomously. For current software engineers and computer science grads, it can feel like the rug has been pulled from under your feet. You start wondering, did I waste thousands of dollars and years learning something AI can do in seconds? I've been in this industry for the last eight years, and while I don't think AI will be replacing software engineers anytime soon, I do think that the role of a developer will change. Certain programming jobs will fade away to be replaced by programming jobs that leverage AI. In this video, I want to go over some skills that I believe are going to be in higher demand and will give you an advantage over the next decade, assuming the adoption of AI tools will continue to grow. Also, stay until the end of the video to see what I feel like is going to be the most underrated skill in the future. In the book Future Proof, Kevin Roos names don't be an endpoint as one of his rules to remain future proof in the age of AI. Even though this was written before the popularity of ChatGPT exploded, it's very accurate today. In programming, API endpoints, as most of you should know, are the middlemen between two applications. But in real life, there are plenty of jobs that exist only to be a connection between two sources without adding much value. For example, a reception Receptionist is the connection between a client and the scheduling software. A data entry clerk is the connection that enters numbers from one spreadsheet to another. You can directly see a relationship between jobs that serve as endpoints and the risk of being automated in the future. If we extrapolate this example further, you can kind of imagine why people say that programmers who are simply moving code from AI to their IDE are at risk of being automated away. As you'll see, most of the skills I mentioned won't be specific technical skills since those will change on a regular basis, but they're mostly guiding principles based on where I think the industry is heading. The first one is multidisciplinary thinking and complex problem solving. In order to stand out in this post-AI world, we need to really think about what AI's weak points are. Unlike humans, it's not great at generating unique insights by combining knowledge from different domains. More so than ever, programmers will be expected to solve higher level, complex business problems rather than just write code to implement a specific simple feature in some sort of crud app. In essence, I think AI is slowly putting upward pressure on what is expected now of a typical junior software engineer. You simply can't be just a code monkey anymore because that can be done by AI. For the first couple of jobs of my career, all I really did was take bug tickets and specific feature requests, like add phone number field to form from my project manager. I was given the exact criteria and design docs, and I wasn't really involved in any of the planning, research, or design process. These days, as we've been able to outsource a lot of the grunt work that juniors used to do, we're now expected to think about big picture and solve business problems rather than just code problems. Instead of only working on specific concrete features, we're going to be more and more tasked with ambiguous problems such as make this page load a bit faster. It's going to be up to us as software developers how to actually do that, whether it's by refactoring the components or introducing progressive rendering. And we're going to have to think about the trade-offs of each design decision and take into account the priorities and timelines of the team. AI can tell you how to add pop-ups to your app, but a good software developer would work with the UX UI person and decide if that's even necessary. If you even have just a basic understanding of business concepts and user psychology, you're going to be that much more valuable. You'll be someone who's solving business problems with code and not just a coder. The next one shouldn't be that surprising, and that's AI engineering. There is a ton of hype surrounding AI startups right now, and this creates a lot of opportunity for engineers who can take advantage of this wave. If you look at Y Combinator's latest batch of startups, nearly all of them heavily involve AI in one way or another. And because of that, demand for engineers who are comfortable with AI tools and AI services is at an all-time high. The World Economic Forum recently surveyed a thousand company executives asking them which skills they're going to be looking for now and in the next five years. And among the top three are AI and big data. Now, you don't necessarily need to go back to school and get a PhD in machine learning 
learning and become a machine learning engineer or AI researcher, but having a decent understanding of AI agents, reg, and prompting will make you a more attractive candidate over the next few years. You don't need to be the one building or training the models. There is a ton of demand for engineers that can consume those services and know how to implement, productionize, and deploy AI apps. Currently, I am going through Scrimba's AI engineer path, which is going to cover literally everything I just mentioned step by step. It's going to go over how to work with AI services, agents, the most popular libraries right now, and so many other critical areas. It's one of the most comprehensive and practical programs I've come across and co-created with domain leaders Hugging Face and Lang Chain. If you're serious about improving your coding skills, I highly recommend signing up for free and checking out what they have to offer. What I love about Scrimba is that you're not just passively watching a tutorial and then having to struggle with setting up your local environment and recreating the code. With Scrimba, just pause the video anytime and directly edit the code inside your browser. They completely reinvented the screencast for coding. They call these scrims, which magically combine the IDE and lesson recording into one. Not only that, but they regularly prompt you to solve challenges inside the lessons and work on building real world projects so that you can actually put into practice what you've learned. But if AI engineering is not your jam right now, they've also got a huge range of courses from React, TypeScript to the front end developer career path co-created with Mozilla MDN. It includes a whole section on acing the interview and is designed to take you from zero to fully hireable. They've also just launched support for full stack development, including courses on Node, Next, Express, SQL, plus lots more on the way. Don't just listen to me though. They've also got glowing reviews online. The best part is that they've also got a ton of free high quality courses. So go sign up for free if you want to fast track your learning and thank you Scrimba for sponsoring this video. The next skill is very related and that's AI coding tools and prompt engineering. I mentioned this earlier, but my prediction is that over the next few years, as AI coding tools become even better and more widely adopted, the expectations for developer productivity will probably rise if it hasn't already. According to the latest Stack Overflow developer survey, about 61% of respondents are already using AI coding tools, and I expect that number to increase over the next few years. Now, there's some evidence to suggest that AI-generated code is more prone to errors, so if you can use it without trusting it blindly, you will be ahead of the game. When you start to use AI intelligently and you get an understanding of how LLMs work, you can have a more clear picture of its capabilities and limitations. The next skill that's going to be extremely valuable is deep domain knowledge. It's not a coincidence that all the AI demos focus on building simple applications from scratch. The thing is, the business context that you need in order to fix tricky bugs in a legacy system is simply too much for LLMs to handle at the moment. When a production outage happens, AI could help you understand an error message, but it's not going to tell you that the root cause is because a user's account is messed up from a data migration three months ago that missed her account, and that's why the JSON data sent to the server is incompatible. The best engineers that I've worked with had deep technical expertise in a particular area, but also a ton of domain knowledge about the product that he's working on. Anytime someone needed ideas on the right data migration strategy or wanted to discuss whether or not a certain feature was technically feasible within the given time frame, they went to him. At the end of the day, AI is great at solving well-defined problems within narrow contexts, whether it's generating regexes to validate email or boilerplate code. But anyone who has worked as a developer for any amount of time knows that real-world software development rarely requires you to build simple applications from scratch, maybe unless you're prototyping. But being the go-to person for a specific niche will make you indispensable. There are tons of unique problems that AI can't solve yet or doesn't have the public training data to solve, and that can be your competitive advantage. The next group of skills is what I like to broadly call humanistic traits, and they include empathy, creativity, opinion, and communication. In an era where so much of our communication is artificially generated by Autosuggest and less and less of it takes place face-to-face, there is a massive opportunity to stand out. The most recent Apple intelligence update summarizes text messages and gives you suggestions for replies. What does that say about us as a society that we can't even be bothered to read and respond to messages from our friends and family? Like what is even the goal here? These tools and features inch us closer and closer to a dystopia where it's just bots talking to each other and we're in complete isolation, doom scrolling AI generated content. And before you ask, yes, I'm actually human and I try to avoid using ChatGPT in my content. 
That's a lie. I sometimes use it to clean up my grammar. But my point is, soft skills are becoming more rare and therefore more valuable. Someone who's able to communicate technical concepts to non-technical people and use their creativity are, will stand out among everyone else who's just mimicking whatever AI is spitting out. At the end of the day, we don't need more information. We want to hear strong opinions from people that can put the numbers and figures into perspective and weave it into a compelling narrative. There's definitely a time and place for chatbots, but at the end of the day, most people have an innate desire for human connection. An AI chatbot can't understand and empathize with your unique struggles the way a human can. They can't even empathize with you the way a dog can. Software development is an inherently creative field, and those who dare combine ideas from different fields and understand humans at a deep level will be the winners of the future. The next one is meta learning. This skill is probably going to give you the best return on investment throughout your entire career. When I started doing research for this video, my initial intention was to create a list of specific technical skills that would be in demand for the next few years. But the truth is everyone who is confidently telling you which skills are going to be future proofing your career is at best making an educated guess. Data structures, algorithms, and solid programming fundamentals are a safe bet. But aside from that, there is no telling where the future is going to go. You need to be prepared to learn new things as the demands of your job and the market changes. Just like how website builders such as WordPress or Wix have forced web developers to adapt in the early 2000s, engineers who are flexible and willing to learn new things are going to have a serious advantage in this AI era. The best way you can prepare for this constant change is learning how to learn efficiently. I've mentioned this book several times before, but Ultra Learning by Scott Young will show you that the way you were taught to learn in school growing up is completely ineffective. In the book, he describes how to learn difficult skills such as coding a lot faster. Having to remain flexible and open to learning new things was something that you kind of had to do before AI anyways. So this isn't really much of a change, but now it becomes even more crucial after the advent of AI. In this post AI world, there is more opportunity than ever for software engineers who can take advantage of this gold rush. We just need to stay proactive and keep an eye out for emerging trends. As everyone is starting to run away from tech due to their fear of AI taking the jobs, my honest prediction is that good engineers will be even more in demand in the future. And despite all this hype surrounding AI, I do want to stress that people ultimately are creatures of habit and no one likes change. People are inherently lazy and most businesses, especially the ones outside of Silicon Valley and not in the tech sector, move at a glacial pace. Companies are notoriously slow at adopting new technologies, so don't feel like you need to be overwhelmed by all these skills and courses that you need to take. As always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below as I do read and try to respond to every single one. Thank you so much for your time and for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.